Well, good morning, Refuge Assembly. Good morning. It's going to be a great day in Jesus today. And uh, for those that are watching online, let me just tell you a little bit of, about the church. Uh, first of all, welcome Refuge Assembly, and also welcome to our online guests. It's, uh, it's Sunday, October 9th, 2022. I'm Pastor Dennis. And I'm Bobby, and we're glad to have you with us. Now, you can pick up our services on our website anytime on the Listen to a Service page or at Facebook Live at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sundays. And there's also a lot more great info on our website, and that's refugeagetn.com. Thanks, Remy. And um, I want to tell you a little bit about our church, what's going on, what the Lord has been doing here. Uh, everybody here already knows, but for the folks online, our church is located in a little town north of Chattanooga, Tennessee, called Soddy Daisy. Popu what's the population, Saudi Daisy? Well, there's a bunch of folks. So, Saudi Daisy, everybody, hoo, 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 hoo. salute. <laughs> it's a great place. It's at the base of a mountain. It is an absolutely beautiful place. Yes. And um, we are so happy to be here. We have some of the world's friendliest people. We can pretty much consider this church one of the world's friendliest churches, too. Now, and I mean that. Those watching online, I, I really mean what I say. And um, if you're ever in the Chattanooga area, please look us up. We have services on Sunday morning, like this morning, 11-ish, we start. And on Wednesdays, we have services starting at 6 o'clock. And we start Wednesday night with dinner. The ladies cook and their food. Oh, my goodness. I really do mean it's the best restaurant in town right here. And that's on Wednesday nights. Then we have uh, Wednesday. We call it Surprise Wednesday because uh, it's different. Every s Sometimes we have Bible study. Sometimes we have a prayer meeting. Sometimes a regular worship service. Sometimes, like this past week and the next two weeks, we'll be showing videos from Charles and Annette Caps yes. on, listen closely, Quantum Faith. This is incredible Amen. material. And um, because we really do believe in miracles, because we have had so many miracles at this church. Those in the audience, are th now people online are going to see this. If you've had a miracle at this church, raise your hand. Yes, the Lord. That's pretty much everybody here wow. in church. That's an amazing thing. Wow. And I don't just mean just a, a, some average miracle. No, I mean we've had creative works happen in this church right here. Everything from prophetic to healings. Do, uh, the past three Wednesdays, we had three deliverances. I mean, uh, I, I'm not bragging. I'm not boasting, except I'm boasting on the Lord. Amen. What he's been doing here, because we believe yes. in everything in the Bible. Therefore, that's why we call ourselves a full gospel church. If the Bible says we can do it, we can do it. Amen. So um, we'll be talking more about that today. But I just wanted to give you a little preview. And uh, for those watching online the service, uh, we are so thankful that the Lord has been moving mightily yes. in this church. And uh, we've got some special events coming up. We'll tell you more about that down the line. Um, but we are so happy to be Amen. here this morning. We are so happy. Amen. All our all our people are here this morning. Yes. It's going to be just a wonderful, wonderful day. And um, there are miracles, signs, and wonders going to take place yes. in this church today. And for those of you watching online, if you could receive this by faith, if you need a miracle, uh, Holy Spirit many times gives us a prophetic word or word of knowledge. Somebody has a particular thing that they need or a problem, um, I pray that this day, those watching online, this day will be your day to receive the answer that you've been awaiting, the miracle and healing that you've been needing, and a, a number of other things that I pray that this will be your day yes. because the Lord loves you. He cares for you. He, you know, uh, everybody, tap somebody and say, the Lord loves you and he cares for you. So uh, with that, 
I just feel like praising the Lord. How many people you just say, today I'm going to praise the Lord. If that's you, please stand with us because here we go. Praise the Lord. Two, three, four. how much power is in that name. It's a lot of power. Amen. Oh. Amen. Glory to God. I'm dependent on it, and I'm hoping to see more this year. Me too. Than I've ever seen before. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because yeah. I know it's for us, and I know it's there. Yes. So I'm going to press in. Same here. Like I've never pressed in before because. We've got to. Now is the time. Amen. Yes. Amen. Why not now? If not now, when? When? Yeah. Like. Sister D was saying, time is of the essence today. It Praise is. Praise God. Yes, it is. Time is running out. Yes, it is. There's only so much time that he's, he's allotted for the dispensation of the Gentiles. That's right. And for a lot of different things that are going on. And I want to be prepared when I get to the finish line of each <laughs> situation. Yes. Amen. So I say, Lord, yep. yes. I pray for us all that we would all be counted worthy to escape all those things that are coming upon this world. Amen. Yes. And there's a blessing to praying that prayer, church. Yes, there is. So let's pray it every day, amen? Mm, that's good. Praise God. Praise God. Wow. What a beautiful name. What a, what beautiful. a wonderful name. 
powerful. What a powerful name. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. What is in that name? Do you know at, the, at the name of Jesus, the yes. Bible says, every knee shall bow, bow and Amen. every tongue, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, heaven. of things in, in the earth, and of things under the earth. Yes. And every tongue shall confess yes. that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. To the glory of Let's God. Let's say it together. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Dr. Fence says, Lord, yes. over my life in the prayer. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And good. He is Lord. And you know, the enemy can't stand to hear us say that. Uh, no, that's true. But it's the truth, and we're going to say it, and we won't be quiet. Praise that's God. Right. You may be seated. <laughs> oh, that's good. I've been praying. That's how I'm going to start this message off. I've been praying. How many people here you've been praying about some things? Three days ago, let's see, Thursday, yeah, three days ago, I was reading, doing my regular devotion, and these two scriptures jumped off the page, and I'm thinking to myself, Lord, and there's an anointing on these two verses, what, what are you, what are you saying here? I read them over a few more times, I said, there's something here. Maybe that's what you want to talk about on Sunday. So later that day, I read them again, and they still had that same anointing. The next day, same. And Saturday came up, the day I usually finalize what I'm going to, what the Lord would have me to speak on Sunday, and it was those two scriptures. The title of this message is A Timeless Prayer for Revival. Now we're going to, the basic scripture for this is out of Psalm 90, just two verses, 16 and 17, the last two verses of Psalm 90. But I have to tell you just a little bit about Psalm 90. How many know that most of the Psalms were written by David? Not all of them, but most of them. David was a songwriter. He was also a prayer warrior. He also played the harp. No, no, not the not the blues harp. I'm just talking about, you know, never mind. And, um, but this psalm, Psalm 90, was written by Moses. So they brought it, this psalm forward into the book of Psalms. But this is a prayer of Moses. As a matter of fact, it actually quotes the psalm right before it starts it says a prayer of Moses the man of God right from the start I know it's going to be special because a different person wrote this and when David wrote the psalms it was quite a few years after Moses wrote matter of fact in the thousands so let's look at these at just out of the King James Version Psalm 90, verse 16 and 17, and it'll be on the screen. Or just read it slow. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. And establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to study your word, but we are actively praying for revival for our family, for our loved ones, for our nation. Revival. Because it is by far the most important thing at this time that we can pray doesn't make any difference what this government is doing or what that thing is doing or what's going on here or there. Revival is a bottom line. Lord, we're praying actively this day forward for revival to hit our family, our loved ones, our town, our county, our state, and our nation. And 
when it hits here, may it spread all over the world. We thank you for this. We're in agreement upon this prayer, and we ask you to bless it because we believe it is your perfect will. In Jesus' holy and wonderful and magnificent name we pray, and everybody shouted like a football game. Amen. Amen. I want you to know I just took my gum out. I put it there. I didn't stick it underneath it. Never mind. I just, I'll pick it back up again. Now, that scripture we just read, that doesn't really sound like a revival kind of scripture. We're going to look at it in two more translations. This translation makes it a little clearer. Let's look at it in the Amplified Classic. Here we go. Same scripture, uh, Psalm 90, verse 16 and 17. Let your work, the signs of your power, be revealed to your servants. Somebody say, that's me. And your glorious majesty to their children. Verse 17. And let the beauty and delightfulness and favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Confirm and establish the work of our hands. Yes, the work of our hands. Confirm and and establish it. Now that sounds a little closer to revival, but but wait, the best is yet to be. Somebody say, wait for it. Okay. Now we're going to look at the same scripture in the Passion Translation. I, that's exactly what I said when I, I couldn't wait to read it. Randy, that was good. Same thing, Psalm 90, verse 16 and 17, the Passion Translation. Let if this it, if you feel this the way I felt it when I first read it, and you just feel like standing and shouting and praising and doing, you just be free in Jesus. Do whatever the Holy Spirit has for you to do. Let us see your miracles again, and let the rising generation see the glorious wonders you're famous for. Verse seventeen, O Lord our God. Let your sweet beauty rest upon us. Come work with us, and then our works will endure. You will give us success in all we do. Somebody shout revival. <laughs> revival. Because, you see, if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness... If we're seeking his face on a regular basis, he's seeing all this stuff going on in the world. Somebody say, all this stuff. It doesn't bother him, but some of it does make him unhappy. How many people know that if the, the, the people with children or grandchildren or great-grandchildren, if one of those does something to hurt themselves, or does something, doesn't it make you feel bad at first? And you want to help them, right? It's just, it's a natural. Well, that's why our Heavenly Father feels that way about us. That's why it's a relationship. But that seven, verse 17 says, says, Come work with us, and then our works will endure. Not just our works, but if we're seeking first His kingdom, He wants revival for His people. We want to be in the place, in the position, which is on our knees usually, that way he can use us to start, somebody say start a new thing. Because right now is the perfect time for revival. Could you say that with me? Right now is the perfect time for revival. Shall we continue? I'm glad you said so. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Everett. Scripture. Wait a second. I have to read the last part of that again because it has to do with this. Uh, once again, out of the Passion Translation. Let us see your miracles again. Let the rising generation see the glorious works you're famous for. 
let your sweet beauty rest upon us. Come work with us. Everybody say, come work with us. Next scripture, Mark 16, verse 20, out of the King James. And they went forth, his, the, the disciples of, uh, of Jesus, the early church, and they went, went forth, help me out, and preached. Where? The Lord working with them and confirming the words shouted out with signs following. This is what we want the Lord to bless. Not the work really of our hands, but the work he's doing through our hands that makes all the difference. Because you see, and D, you had mentioned the scripture this morning. Um, Jesus, the Christ, is seated at the right hand of God in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and he God the Father has put all things under his feet and gave Jesus to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that fills all in all and he has made us, everybody point to somebody, he's made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I guess he's talking about us. He, Miss, Miss Eileen, he's talking about us again. He talk, pass, it, pass it around, he's talking about us again. He wants us involved. He's the head and we're his body. So we want to be active. Not doing our own thing, but always doing his thing. Because if we're doing his thing, he's going to bless it. Because it's his thing. i got to read this last one again. The disciples of Jesus, they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the words with signs following. So we're talking about revival. So what's our part to start? Is that a good question? How do we start this thing? Somebody say, pray the word. Pray the word, because his word does not come back void, but it will accomplish the thing we're to, we're to he sends it. And he, if we pray the word, see, our angels hearken to the voice of his word. If we're praying the word, if somebody tap your neighbor and said, the word works. That's where we pray the word. Hmm. In the beginning was the word. And the word. Oh, so that's a good place to start. Pray the word. Okay? That's good. Let's go to next scripture. Isaiah. I know there's a lot of scripture. But we're painting a picture of this is not just Pastor Dennis saying we need revival. I fully believe that the Lord is saying to his church, and that's the church all over the world, Revival is what's needed. All this stuff going on. You know, you, here's the bottom line. You could either point your finger and say, this is wrong, that's wrong, this is wrong, th that's all wrong, the, or you could just show people what's right. I'd rather do that. I'd rather say, you know what, let's not talk about all that uh, because we may disagree with things, but uh, one thing we won't disagree with we need revival. We need to draw closer to Jesus and people that don't know him need to have a powerful miracle, spirit-filled, holy, incredibly awesome experience with Almighty God. And the only way I know that to start happening is Jesus coming into the room and saying, yep, I am the Son of God. No man comes to the Father but by me. This is the truth of the matter. You can say there's many ways to God, but it's a lie. Don't believe it. Jesus himself said, there, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Somebody say that's the bottom line. So this revival that we're talking about is for people to say, you ready? 
is just simple to say yes to Jesus. That's a good place to start. I don't take any credit for the Lord saving me. He called and I said yes. That's the only credit I, I take. I said yes. He's been doing this stuff in my life ever since. Let's go on here. Isaiah 57, 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one. That's a good description right there. Don't you? I, I, could I just say that again? For thus saith the high and lofty one. Somebody say, whoa. That inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place. You ready? This is exciting. With him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. Somebody say, why? why? To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of of the contrite ones. You can clap your hands if you want right there. So, so wait a second. This is he who dwelt. This is the high and lofty one, Heavenly Father, that inhabits, inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him that is of a contrite and humble spirit. Okay, okay contrite and humble and then it says the next uh, the next part says to revive the spirit of the humble to revive the heart of the contrite ones okay okay let, we got to take that apart um everybody say humble you know what the opposite is sometimes to get a true meaning of something you've got to look at its uh, antonym i believe they called it it's opposite the opposite of humble is prideful uh oh that paints a picture right there. Has anybody seen a lot of things? Now, I'm not going to name any particular names, but how many pride things do we see in this world right now? Pride. I remember a T-shirt back when I was a teenager. and Somebody wanted to give one to me. He said, no, no, I don't want to wear that. It says, I'm proud to be Italian. I'm proud to be Irish. I'm proud to be this. I'm just proud to be alive after what I went through. And if it wasn't for Jesus, I wouldn't be here. How's that sound? But the opposite of humble is prideful. Some people are doing things right now, as I said, I'm not going to mention any names. You could insert the blank, whatever you want to put in there. But some people are actually shaking their finger at God and say, I'm proud of things that he actually is condemning. So when you're, when you're saying that you're prideful about sin, I don't care what the sin is. It don't make any difference. Everybody say sin is sin. When you're prideful about your sin, you're not making the Lord very happy. And if he's the high and lofty one, you, you don't want to make him unhappy. Wait a second. Let me, let me take us there a different route. Sometimes to understand the full picture, you've got to go halfway. Um, when you're pulled over by an officer because you're speeding, the proper etiquette to do is when the officer comes to your window and says, uh, Hi, officer. Sorry, I know I was I was going too fast. Here's my license and registration. I apologize. I wasn't thinking. That's a really good thing because off the top, you're all already disarming him that he can't tell you, do you know how fast you were going? The last thing you want to say, no, how fast? I mean, don't, don't do that. <laughs> you know we were going 90, the, the speed limit's only 50. Ah, just be honest but when you're talking about God and you're trying to and you're being prideful about some kind of sin whatever this sin is I dwell in the high and holy place with him all also that is of a contrite and humble spirit so let's take the word contrite everybody say contrite you know what that means thank you it means repentant it means just repentant. Okay, let me demonstrate repentant. Repentant means you are walking this way, which is the wrong way, and all of a sudden you say, oops, wrong way. And you turn around and you start walking the other way. 
description of repentance. I'm not going to walk that way anymore, uh, anymore because I didn't realize it because it was kind of dark, but there's a cliff right there that I've t- if I took five more steps, I would have went off the cliff. I think, did you, ever, did you ever back up your car in a really tight spot? We saw this last weekend uh, by our house. Uh, there was a, there's a park over there. And somebody backed up their car without looking. And their back wheels ended up in the ditch. And I, we saw them getting out of the car and going like this. They were probably saying, oh, I should have looked in back of me before I backed up. And we went past that spot. We d- did a couple of things, came back the other way, and there was a line of cars lined up. I said, I bet that I bet there's a tow truck trying to tow them out of the ditch. Sure enough, we stayed. We were about five minutes waiting. There was a tow truck towing them out. But repentance is you were going this way, and you decided that's not a good way for me to go. I'm going to go this way instead. That's what contrite means. Repenting. Humble. The opposite is prideful. Now let me read this line again. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him that is of a contrite and humble spirit. To do what? To revive the spirit of the humble. To revive the heart of the contrite ones. So for revival to take place, There's two things that people need to do. They need to humble themselves in the sight of the Lord and repent for things that they're doing that probably is not making him too happy. How does that sound like as a good place to start? If my people that are called by my name (laughs) shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land somebody say now that's the outcome we're looking for forgive their sin and heal their land somebody say i'll take that is that what we need right here in the united states right now then we got to be humble and contra we just got to be the opposite of prideful and we've got to be we've got to be not afraid to repent there was a few things that we that I had to learn early on in our marriage and one of those things was Dennis don't be afraid to say you're sorry if you messed up she already knows you're sorry anyhow (laughs) but don't be afraid to say you're sorry don't be afraid to say I was wrong because when you do that then you let the other person know that you're willing to change. Being willing to change is what the Lord is talking about over here. Somebody say, that's good, we can do this. I want to read the same scripture out of the message translation. Now, Mr. Peterson, who passed away a few years ago, who wrote the message, there are some scriptures in this translation that are best way to say that bold bold is a good word here it comes a message from the high and towering god who lives in eternity whose name is holy i live in the high and holy places but also with the low spirited and spirit crushed and what i do is i put new spirit in them does somebody say revival get them up and on their feet again i gotta just say those two outcomes what i do saith the lord is i put new spirit in them get them up and and on their feet again somebody say that's revival because there are some people that are actually feeling so crushed and so low because they've been They've been in the fire. I'm speaking to somebody online right now. You've been going through a situation 
and you feel like you're just crushed. I don't know your situation, but the Lord does. Do you know that this is the perfect time for you to say, Lord, I've tried it my way. I've done everything I know to do. Could you please step in and take over and help me? The Lord is going to say yes. You ask him for your help, he will say yes. Be humble. Don't be afraid to say you're sorry. And if there's things that you did or that you're doing that are not pleasing to him, turn it around and do the right thing instead. Somebody say revival. So we got to pray the word, and that's what we're doing this morning. We're getting ready to pray right now. Usually at this time, the end of the scripture, I say, let us pray. But we're going to pray for specifically revival. We are actually going to pray the Psalm 90, 16, and 17 out of the Passion Translation. So, Jimmy, we'll put that up, and we'll just take it a little bit at, at, at a time. Verse 16, Lord, we pray to see your miracles again and again and again through our hands. Why through our hands? Because here am I, send me. Everybody say, here am I, send me. Lord, we pray that we want to see those miracles again. And the generation that's coming in back of us, Lord, we need them to see the glorious wonders that you're famous for. They've heard about it, but they haven't seen it. And as the saying goes, seeing is believing. That's why you told Thomas, well, blessed are those who do not see and still believe. That's called faith. But however you got to do it, Lord, we want the generation in back of us to see your glorious wonders that you're famous for that. Tap your neighbor and say, he's famous for that. Oh, Lord God, verse 17, we pray that your sweet beauty rest upon us. Boy, that's a good thing. Anybody like that? That his sweet beauty will rest upon us. You could tap your neighbor and say, that's the anointing. Because, see, the anointing we may not be able to see with our eyes. But the anointing breaks the yoke. The anointing is where the healing comes in, where the prophecy comes in, where the supernatural takes place. Because it's not us. It's him working through us. That's the bottom line. Oh, Lord, our God. Let your sweet beauty, your anointing, rest upon us. Come work with us, O Lord. Everybody say, come work with us, O Lord. And then our works will endure. Yes, say it again. And then our works will endure. We're talking big time works. We're talking lasting works. Temporary is not good enough anymore. We need, Lord, you to do the things that when people say it and think about it and hear about it and view it with their own eyes, they could honestly say, God is among, is among these people. He's in this place. This is not some ritual. This is not religion. We're talking about the God of eternity. The high and lofty one is with these people. And they're going to say, I want that. I want that for me. We pray that this happens. And that today, we pray that the catalyst for this to take place is our faith. By faith, we commit to the revival that you want to do, O oh Lord, in us, in our family and loved ones, in our community, in our state, and in our nation, we believe this would be your perfect will right now. And Lord, 
thy will be done. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said, Revival's coming. Tap your neighbors and Revival's coming. Revival's coming. By faith, it started now. By faith, it started now. You could say that with me if you want. By faith, it started now. Who knows what's going to happen later today through our lives? Who knows what's going to happen tomorrow and this week through our lives? If you, through our lives, if you can receive this, take it with you because we got anointing to go in this church. You take it with you wherever you go, wherever you walk this thing out in your area of influence. The Lord can work with you and through you and establish the work of our hands because he's working through our hands. Yes, Lord, the work of our hands establish it.